Marine Corps pilot. Um, I fly C-130s, which are four-engine uh, cargo and attack helicopter uh, aircraft. That's nice. And what were your typical responsibilities in a day? So, as a pilot in the Marine Corps, we not only fly the aircraft, but we also have what's called a ground job. Mm -hmm. So, my office job is the squadron intelligence officer. So, I have Marines that work for me that conduct uh, analysis on things that could spread to our aircraft and to the country. Nice. Now, have you ever been in combat? Um, if not, how does your role support those in combat? I have not been in combat. Um, I'm still, I'm pretty new. Just got out of flight school uh, a few months ago. So my role right now, though, is uh, facilitating and helping with training back here and uh, doing a lot of logistics support uh, for the rest of the Marine Corps as well. I see. Now, um, from your experience in the military so far, what have you exactly learned? I've loved, learned a lot about not only myself, people around me. It's been very humbling to learn the what you can do with a little bit of determination and willingness to persevere. But I've also learned a lot about leadership, working mm -hmm. with other people. Uh, the military really brings a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds and people that you wouldn't meet otherwise. And I've really just appreciated the opportunity to be able to That's great. spend a lot of time with some really great people. Now, this isn't one of the questions, but how do you think some of those um, attributes will ap apply to the day when you c go battle? So, uh, for our aircraft and for the community that I work in within the Marine Corps, we're very dependent on trusting each other. So our aircraft flies with two pilots in the front. We have what's called a flight engineer who's helping out with aircraft systems sitting right behind us. And then we have at least two, if not more, uh, we call them load masters who are in the back of the aircraft helping with cargo personnel or whatever we're carrying at the time. And we have to be able to rely on each other and we have to be able to trust that we all know how to do our jobs and that in moments where maybe we're in a threat environment or we are just having some sort of emergency and maybe an engine catches on fire or anything that could happen while we're in there, that as a pilot up in the front, being able to have the initiative and decisiveness to be able to make decisions and lead the crew through solving any of these problems that might come up. Definitely, yeah, I think... We train towards all of those things. Yeah, I think trust is definitely a huge part of... Definitely. Um, ...military. Now, in your mind, what justifies going to war? So, that's a uh, pretty profound question. Um, mm -hmm. And hard to answer it in, in just a couple of sentences, but it would obviously have to be a a dire risk to national security. Uh, but I I would preface that the all of the other avenues should be exhausted. We should have tried diplomacy, we should have tried sanctions, we should try simply working together as an international community before going to war. However, that doesn't mean that war is never an option. Uh, and in the eventual case that we have to go to war, um, the military is obviously very ready to conduct whatever we need to do. Definitely. Um, now, let's see. Do you think our country has effective policies when it comes to war? <laughs> um, I think that we are effective at carrying out combat I'm gonna yeah leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> yes um now I really appreciate appreciate what you did for our country and for my liberty um even though you haven't gone into combat yet I still appreciate your bravery and trying to protect our rights 
After serving in the military, do you have a greater appreciation for liberty? Uh, I do. I think just it's a the people that you meet that have truly gone out there and done some very incredible things. Um, we do. We all should give them our respect and gratitude. Um, and seeing what other countries do have to deal with um, outside of the Western civilization can also be very, very humbling um, and make you grateful for what we have here. Yeah, definitely. America has, um, well, a moderately better amount of resources compared to other countries. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I personally don't agree with this question, but would you tell me one of your favorite stories from your military experience? If you don't want to, um, you do not need to answer. But. Uh, just a, I mean, we, we have a lot of fun, like a lot of different things. I mean, right now I'm uh, flying, night flying, um, based out of Santa Barbara. Uh, for the weekend, which is really cool. Um, <laughs> you get to do a lot of really cool stuff that way. Um, the the stories that always stick out are never going to be the ones that are... I guess sometimes the the scary ones might be remembered, but we're, we're going to remember the you know, funny thing. Uh, by training, we have a, a full motion simulator. It's a lot like uh, Soar in California at California Adventure. And... I was executing a maneuver and ended up putting in the control inputs a little bit too hard and heard a shattering sound right behind me. And uh, it turned out that I had moved the simulator so quickly that the instructor's coffee cup had flown out of his hand and smashed into the wall. Um, oh, gosh. So, uh, yeah. Um, after the flight, or after the sim, he, uh, he came back the next day and he gave me a little piece of his coffee mug to always remember when I was a bad pilot. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is definitely a story that should be remembered. Now, um, why did you join the military? I have a lot of family in the military. Uh, my grandfather was a Navy captain. My uncle is a general in the Army. Um, I have a couple of cousins that were in the infantry in the Army, and it always felt like a calling, I guess. Uh, when I was in college, I went through ROTC and had a chance to really immerse myself in it. Um, and definitely had, uh, since being in the military, I have appreciated the experience that I've had. Um, seeing the amount of responsibility and opportunity that I've had right out of college is it's not common among a lot of the people that are my age right now. Um, and so just having all of those opportunities and the, again, com camaraderie and um, trust that we can build in each other really drew me to the military. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Uh, no. Uh, it was, uh, I really enjoy doing what I do. Um, I think that the military is uh, a great place to perhaps find yourself if you are unsure of what you want to do. There's plenty of opportunities. Um, but that being said, it should also be something that if someone is interested in joining, they spend some time, really consider it, um, talk to someone that's been in, and truly gain an understanding of what it is that they're signing up for. Yeah. And uh, the military itself, though, um, the people are great, and they have a lot of. They're they're always going to be ready for whatever is asked of them, um, regardless of the opinions on what it is that we may be tasked with. So. Now, would you recommend anyone else serving in the military? Um, I would. I would say, uh, personally, as an officer. Um, the officer track is the way that I would go. Um, 
that's not to say that enlisting is a, a bad choice by any means. Uh, I just think that if you have the opportunity to go to college first and then come in as an officer, you have a much different role than you do on the enlisted side. Uh, if you are, if there's a person that is interested in really being in doing things right on the front lines, whether that's infantry or if you want to be an aircraft mechanic or if you want to work in even clerical duties, logistics, anything like that, you can enlist and really gain some experience. Um, medicine is a really great place, uh, as an example. Our corpsmen who are 18, 19, 20 are doing things that normally you wouldn't get to do unless you were a fully trained paramedic or even a nurse. Mm. Um, and on the officer side, we have a lot of different opportunities that don't exist in the civilian world. Um, in terms of the amount of leadership, you can come straight out of college and be placed in charge of 50, 60 people uh, immediately with millions of dollars in equipment that you're in charge of. Um, you can be a pilot, you can be a doctor. Uh, we have every single career field you can imagine. Uh, again, I just preface that with talk to someone that has been in the military before and really consider uh, what are what's driving someone to run the military and especially looking between the branches because the branches do have significant differences um, I always tell people that if you're interested in joining the military really consider the Air Force the Navy if you really want to join the Marine Corps you should probably get your head checked but if you're still concerned you still want to do it then then maybe uh, you got it you know you really want to be here so. All right. Well, thank you. It's people like you that really protect us, and I am grateful for your bravery. Um, all right. Well, that about sums it up. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, so, just before you go, what is the uh, what is the project that you're doing? The project that I am doing is we were supposed to interview a military officer, and then we would basically look at these questions and then form our own opinion about whether we should join the military, um, would, what, it would, the project was basically supposed to give us some insight um, on the military. We were supposed to see how the military affected some, um, some of our rights um I think that's about it. The other option was interviewing a local politician, which seemed pretty impossible to me. <laughs> so um I decided to interview a military member. Thankfully you were there to accept my yeah. interview. Um yeah. Well, happy to help. Uh, and best of luck on the project. Thank you so much. Cool. All right. Talking to you.